I spent a lot of time this year shooting with adapted lenses on my mirrorless cameras. And on this episode of Micromatic, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to get started with adapting lenses for yourself. Before I get too into this, a quick overview of what I mean by adapted lenses. Um, if you are just getting into photography, a word of warning, this is not vanilla photography. This is very interesting. So here I have an ordinary micro four thirds camera. It's a modern digital mirrorless camera. Uh, and here I have a native lens for it, okay? This is a micro four thirds lens. It's made for my micro four thirds camera. They connect, they work as expected, very vanilla, pretty awesome, but vanilla. So now this lens, however, is not a micro four thirds lens. In fact, this lens is an old OM film lens that was made for film cameras decades ago. Um, it is not made for my micro four thirds cameras. And if I want to get it to work, I have to find an adapter. And this is what we refer to as adapting lenses. So if I try to connect this old film lens to my micro four thirds camera, I'm going to find that it doesn't fit. The, the connections don't work, but if I take this adapter ring, okay, this is just a piece of metal with one connection with a micro four thirds connection on one end and an OM film lens connection on the other end. If I take that, put that onto my micro four thirds camera, I can now take this film lens and connect it. This is a now an adapted lens on my micro four thirds camera. So you might be asking yourself, why would I bother adapting a lens to my camera system? There are plenty of native lenses available. They do what I want. Uh, why would I bother taking a lens from some other camera system and jerry-rigging it to make it work on mine? Well, I've got a few reasons. Uh, the first reason is that you might already own lenses from another camera system and they're available. Why not? Um, let's say you have moved over from a DSLR to a mirrorless camera system. There's a good chance that those lenses from that DSLR you can adapt them to make them work on your mirrorless camera system. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another scenario is that maybe your mom was really into Leica photography back in the day and she's got a box of old Leica lenses in the attic. Uh, those lenses, even though they're not made for your modern mirrorless camera, you can find an adapter that'll make them work so you've already got access to these lenses. Another really good reason to get into adapting lenses is that you can actually get some really interesting glass for not a lot of money. Um, let's take, for example, the lens that I'm shooting this video on. It is, you know, it's not an ex super expensive lens, but it cost me about 300 bucks. That's a native micro four thirds lens. Uh, here's another native micro four thirds lens, which cost me about 600 bucks. So, you know, photography can be kind of an expensive hobby. However, this lens right here is actually the lens that I've used the most this year. This is an old adapted film lens and I paid 35 bucks for it. And it's not a bad lens. There's nothing wrong with it at all, really. It's awesome. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, that's an example of how you can actually end up spending, getting something really interesting without spending a lot of money. And then my third argument for using adapted lenses is that the experience that you get with an old adapted lens is going to be a little bit different than the experience you get with a modern digital lens and there's a chance that you're gonna prefer it. In fact, this is the reason that I've really stuck with adapting lenses this year a lot, is that I really love the experience. And to me, that experience is kind of like driving a stick shift car, right? It's not necessarily faster than an automatic. It's not more powerful than an automatic. Um, in fact, in a lot of ways, a manual stick shift car is worse than an automatic these days. But if you like driving with a stick shift car, the experience of that can't be replicated with an automatic transmission. That's kind of how I feel about these very manual old film lenses, is that you just get a different, more tactile, mechanical feel to your photography that maybe it's a little bit slower than using a native micro four thirds lens. Uh, but if I've got the time, I always prefer the manual mechanical control. So when I refer to one of these things as an adapter, it's really shorthand for a lens mount adapter, okay? And the lens mount is basically just the point of your camera and the point of your lens where the, the camera and the lens connect, okay? That is known as the lens mount. And for each different camera system, they have their own lens mount and the lens mount is responsible for three basic things. One, it's responsible for the physical connection between the camera lens and the camera body, right? Obviously, if it's not the sh same shape, if it's not the same size, the lenses are not gonna connect. And so that's one thing that the lens mount does. Um, another thing that the lens mount does is 
especially in modern cameras, is it handles communication between the camera body and the lens. Uh, and usually, if you've got, say, an autofocus lens, the camera is actually the brains behind that autofocus. The camera is doing, is communicating to the lens how to focus, or it's communicating to the lens how to adjust the aperture. Um, and so that's, again, that's another function of the lens mount here, is to handle that communication between the camera and the lens. And then the third and final function of a lens mount is to maintain proper flange distance. You still with me? Flange distance is the distance between the image sensor, which you can see in here, I think. There you go. Um, and the lens, right? The back of the lens and the image sensor, that is the flange distance. Now, why that's important? If this lens is mounted out here, the flange distance is different, it's not gonna focus correctly. It's not going to perform the way that you expect it to. And in fact, it might not perform at all. So it is highly, highly important that the flange distance be exactly perfect the way that the lens was designed. So now for Micro Four Thirds cameras and pretty much all mirrorless cameras, they have a really, really short flange distance. Um, if I take this old film lens again, and I try to connect it to the, the Micro Four Thirds camera, even if this physical connection worked, the flange distance is totally wrong. This lens would not focus. It wouldn't, it'd basically be a useless lens because the flange distance is not what it needs to be per the design of the lens. Really, the flange distance of this lens needs to be something more like right about here. And so I need a mount that will hold the lens at this correct distance. So now this is where my lens mount adapter is going to help me out. I've got this mount that is not compatible with my lens. I put on a different physical connection uh, that will now allow my old OM film lens to connect to this camera. Uh, but also you can see that it's adding flange distance. So now when I connect this lens to the camera, the correct flange distance between the back of the lens and the image sensor is maintained. And that's why mirrorless cameras are so good at adapting lenses is that that really short flange distance that you have on your mirrorless camera makes it really easy to add much deeper flange distances for older SLR film cameras. So if you're interested in adapting old lenses to work on your modern mirrorless camera, a couple of things to keep in mind. One, lens mount adapters like this, you're gonna need a different adapter depending on which lens you're using and which camera you're using, okay? For example, this adapter here has a micro four thirds mount on the back, so it will connect to my micro four thirds cameras. And on the front, it's got an Olympus OM film adapter or mount. Um, this will not work with a Canon lens, okay? Uh, or let's say I've got here an old C-mount lens. This is made for a security camera system. Um, it's not going to connect to my camera, to my Micro Four Thirds camera using that same adapter. However, I can get a little adapter like this and it will work because it's got, theoretically it'll work, uh, because it's got Micro Four Thirds on the back and on the front, it's got the C-mount adapter. Another thing to keep in mind is that you're probably going to be giving up autofocus if you're getting into adapted lenses. So you're gonna to have to learn how to manually focus your camera. Thankfully, manual focus on mirrorless cameras is actually super easy. And I've got a video that will walk you through the basics of it. Um, you don't always have to give up autofocus. There are certain mount adapters that are, they call them smart adapters, right? Where it will work with an autofocus lens and it'll let the camera communicate to the lens um, how it should be focusing. Those mount adapters tend to be a lot more expensive. Um, these basic ones that I've got, these are like $15 dumb adapters. If you wanna get a smart adapter, they're like a hundred bucks plus. So just keep that in mind. And then one other thing to keep in mind is that you might be giving up some of the compactness of your mirrorless camera by using adapted lenses. So let's take, for example, this native Micro Four Thirds lens, which is actually relatively large for the system, is totally dwarfed by this old adapted film lens, okay? Um, so that's just something to keep in mind, especially once you start adding adapters onto lenses, which increase the size even more so, um, that you, you might have just bought a Micro Four Thirds or another mirrorless camera system because you like how compact it is. If you get into adapting lenses and you're not careful about which lenses and which systems you're mixing and matching, 
you might end up with a, a, a really large package that wasn't exactly what you were after in the beginning. And then the last thing to keep in mind is that you're probably going to have to do your research. Um, finding out which, which lenses are worth buying and adapting to your mirrorless camera can be a little bit daunting. There's not a lot of readily available information. The information is out there. It's on the internet, but you have to go and find it. Uh, and you have to know what you're looking for, right? Generally, when I'm looking for adapted lenses, I'm looking for fast prime lenses. You know, something like uh, this 50 millimeter f 1.8 lens. This is a, a great lens that would be much more expensive if I were to buy it natively, uh, but you can get it cheap and it still performs quite well. Um, if you are looking at old zoom lenses, they tend to not perform quite so well. Um, and even some old prime lenses honestly aren't the best. Um, so you have to do your research. So that's basically it. That's basically everything you need to know to get started with adapting lenses for yourself. Uh, if you've got any questions about it, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, I go through my comments all the time and I will reply to people. Um, if you have a specific question about, you know, which adapter do you need or which lenses should you be looking at, you know, feel free to ask me. Um, and hopefully if you are also into adapted lenses, you'll jump into the comments and you can help other people out with things that you found that you really like. You know, for example, I really like these old OM film lenses, but they're not the only old great lenses out there. If you learned something from this video, if you've gained the courage to try manual adapted lenses on your mirrorless camera, maybe hit the like button down below. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and then I'll see you on the next episode of Micromatic.